Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome back to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Fan Social. This week I'm joined by Ben, Bloomers and Alex as we discuss the back-to-back -back wins. Action Stanley, Alice Wimbledon, move away. Kieran McKenna, he's at the wheel. Four wins out of five. We're also going to start discuss the game against Sheffield Wednesday this weekend at Hillsborough. But first, before going into those games, let's introduce Ben. How are you, my friend? It was good to see you in Wimbledon. You had a good week, my friend? Yeah, very good week. Um, two wins in a week. Can't complain. Yeah, life just feels so much more uh, manageable. Things The week seems to go a lot quicker when you've had a town win and all those times. Um, you know, I'm very busy, obviously, with my job, but any time I've got a moment by uh, making a cup of tea or whatever, that just goes quickly. With the memories of Wes Burns' goals on Tuesday... Yeah, life uh, life is sweet. The journey home was um, yeah, it was easy on Tuesday night, and um, yeah, just great to back up that win from Saturday as well. So big smile on my face all week so far, Ross. Thank you. Good to hear, my friend. And uh, Bloomers, I also saw you in Wimbledon, and um, I got a nice video of you. Um, but then Segs was with you as well, but the security wasn't caring about him; they were caring more about you. But uh, how are you, my friend? The reason that might be is because I came from a different postcode to get in that. Well, Segs was <laughs> probably about five rows back, but. Um... No, all good. Good to see you as well, Ben, on uh, on Tuesday night. And uh, yeah, I sort of echo what his comments were. Really, it's been a, it's been a good week for for us with those two wins, and life looks very rosy at the moment. And uh, long may it continue. Even if Saturday will be probably a considerable step up on the four teams that we've beaten, but uh, yeah, we'll go into that in a bit. And happy to be on. <laughs> Always good to have you on, my friend. And the final man joining us this week is good old Alex. It's been a while, my friend. But I think it's always good you have a, you on the show. How are you, my friend? And you got a nice little snood there. You're nice and cosy. Yes, this is a Christmas present from Dad. Um, like I said, I don't know how to work it, but but it's very very warm, very comfy. I, I want to be wearing it at Ipswich Games, really, but I haven't been able to get up. Been watching on iFollow. I'm just trying to pick certain times when I can get there. Just desperate to get to the ground to to be with everyone. Um, the support is absolutely absolutely incredible, and seeing everybody going to games is. It's really frustrating for me not being able to get to them, but I will, I will, I will. And yeah, just buzzing, buzzing. I certainly wasn't expecting the turnaround that we've had in the last five games. I really wasn't expecting it, but it's the hope that kills you. It does, just, it does. I'm just going to jump on, Ross, just like, just, uh, can you do like a breaking news bit? Like a beat, beat, breaking news? Can someone? Yeah, go on in. What's going on? What's going on? Well, we're about to, we're about to make a new signing. Oh, are we? It's the town I've just tweeted. So uh, if, we, if we wait in a few minutes, this will this will segue into our conversation. So we well, kind of oh. kind of spoiled my introduction there, but I suppose it is quite important. <laughs> oh, wait, At least give, wait, us a, give us a give us a maybe. Is it is it a defender? Is it you know anything? Do we know nothing? No, no, no. Are, okay, are, all right. In the Kings of Anglia WhatsApp chat, there are guesses already being made, but. Uh, Okay. Uh, it's have released this as a sort of five questions, and the fifth question was complete the Sid Stevie Wonder song title, blank sealed delivered. Mm. Ross, oh. what's that? Wow, there signed sealed delivered. Yeah, there we so, go. Yeah, yeah. Well done, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> well done, Ross. <laughs> well done, Ross. <laughs> Fresh out of there. through there in well, a big the... spot. But it's lovely to yeah, be I... here anyway, Ross. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's fine. Um, well, we'll just um wait for that to sort of drop, but we'll quickly just mention. Wes Burns, and we'll go into the game because Wes Burns is behind you, Ben. Not really, but he's got your shirt. Um, <laughs> Wesley Burns, he is on fire. Burns night and all that. Um, Burns, Burns, what's the song? I did, I did this badly on Kings of Anglia, the main part. Burns what's the song again? again? Burns will I tear keep, you apart. I keep forgetting it. It's my favorite division song. Love will tear us apart. Well, yeah. 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 Which is obviously an absolute classic. One of the best songs of all time, I'd say. Yeah. Um, but how good was he last night? Or Tuesday night? Uh, just, he's just getting better every week. I mean, the fans, he, he's, a, he's a proper bums off seat sort of fan, um, um, fans player. Every time Portman Road, I've noticed, as soon as he gets the ball, everybody around you shouts, you know, run at him, go at him, bums off seats. He's an exciting player to watch. And um, I think he came up on one of your recent podcasts or a fan social saying, when's the last time we had a winger, permanent signing winger that we got so excited about? And, you know, you go back... For a very long time, uh, pot luck been in the season. Got the shirt, got Burns on the back. You never know <clears throat> how it's going to pan out. Could have been anybody last year, and you'd be chucking it in the bin at the end of the year. So yeah, lucky for me, he's absolutely on fire. It just it keeps things simple. What I really like when he gets in that final third. I know against Accrington, he had a couple of sort of shot 
shots across or crosses bo- across the box that um, went awry. <clears throat> On the whole, he sort of got that that Harry Kane way of um, finishing. I'm not putting him up on the pedestal as high as Harry Kane, but he just keeps the ball, hits the ball low and hard. And it just made, it's amazing how many times that pays off. It, it does frustrate me when professional footballers try and score the perfect goal and, you know, smash it top bins. You know, if you just get the ball, get the ball out of your feet, keep your shoulder, keep your head over the ball, get your knee, knee over the ball, just hit it hard and low. You know, goalkeepers, it's a hard shot to defend. And a lot of his finishes have been like that. A nice little dink, a little bit clever against Accrington, but the goals, the carbon copies on Tuesday. He he's in such good form, he must be oozing confidence. I know he said the whole squad is, but um, in particular, he he is showing um, or leading this team, um, which is just so refreshing because usually you look to your strikers. And bearing in mind he's playing right wing back. I know in this formation we're pushing him very high up the pitch, but he's still right wing back. He's not an out and out sort of in a 4-3-3 playing wide right or in a 4-4-2. He is having to do some defensive duties. Um, so, yeah, absolutely delighted, Ross. He is on fire. He will tear you apart again. Let's hope he can again Saturday. And just a little shout out. I did tweet um, on the Tuesday after the game. A lot to do with this form is Janoi Danassian. I just think he's playing unbelievable. He burns notes. He can just go because Danassian is so solid behind him. He's happy to go one and one against anybody and, and confident to... Uh, to beat him, he doesn't need Burns back there helping him. So that does give Burns a bit of license, which is paying dividends and it's all good for the team. Okay, then. Well, Bloomers, over to you, my friend, for da, 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 the Klaxon. Oh, yeah. Don't know what that was. <laughs> Don't know what that was. That was so good. <laughs> oh, That's- yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll audio cap that for future breaking news that happened on the podcast recordings. Um, yeah. Ipswich Town have signed the Brentford fullback Dominic Thompson on loan for the rest of the season. He's featured twice in the Premier League this season, joins from Brentford until the end of the campaign. He's 21, a product of the Arsenal Academy, having signed a schoolboy contract with the Gunners in 2012, and then joined Brentford in 2019, a year after signing professional terms with Arsenal. And yeah, he's featured 43 times for different clubs. He had a loan on uh, a season loan at Swindon last year with 25 appearances and two uh, Premier League appearances alongside two EFL Cup appearances for Brentford this season. So yeah, that's that's the signing. And uh, Ron, certainly out of left field, I didn't see too much made about this until literally when I told you guys that the town a Twitter account have, have said that this is about to happen. So. Yeah, what do we guys think? Quick, quick snap thoughts on signing up a another fullback for the for the rest of the season. Maybe Penny is a bit more injured than we thought. Just that's a thought I'm dropping out there straight away. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a real it's a real positive. But again, these signings you just never know, do you? You never know whether they're going to fit into the team or whether they're going to, you know, everything's going to work really well. You just don't know. But from the outside looking in, as a 21 year old enthusiastic, you kind of think McKenna does seem to know his stuff and uh, you, we're very much trusting him and, and why wouldn't we? I mean, he's, he's showing nothing that would um, indicate that he doesn't know what he's doing. So for me, Ben, I think that's, that looks really promising. Yeah, it's an area that I think we needed to to, to, to look at this window. Absolutely, so yeah, we, we are struggling there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think KBY had the best game Tuesday night and that was culmin, culminated with the second booking. <laughs> Um, a little bit unlucky, but now we're obviously suspended, suspended for one game. Penny just been in and out, picking up the odds, um, the odd injury. Coulson, uh, at the beginning of the season, looked like he was going to be a great signing, but just cannot stay fit. So, yeah, definitely an area we needed to improve on. <clears throat> Young, athletic, exactly in the type of mould we're looking at um, to the fullback, wing back. Can't go wrong, can we, with a loan? You know, if it works <laughs> out, if it's the sort of age, not getting a game at Brentford we could sign. Hopefully that's what they're looking at. But, yeah. Um, yeah, a bit of a, as they say, no-brainer signing, I think. More more importantly, so Ross just flashed up the picture for those of you that are watching the video. And uh, if you haven't seen a picture yet, uh, quickly have a look while you're listening to this. He's got some fantastic red accents uh, at the end of his dreadlocks. Now, if he can convert those somehow into blue, he could be the 21st century David Johnson. Yes. For those of us old enough to remember when he did that for the Wembley game. Unfortunately, he got it for 30 seconds, which didn't yeah. help, but... Uh, yeah, can we can we can we see can we see a bit of that, please, Dominic? Be uh be on brand because you're not playing for a team that plays in red anymore. We, we need some uh, we need some adjustment there if we can. I'm not a hairstylist. Hey, I don't know how, how hard that you, would take for him to do that, but just throwing that out there. You can't grumble about someone that's got any Premier League experience, really, can you? Coming into a League One side, so um, young, hopefully strong. I I do think 
don't want to dwell on it too long. I do think that was an, a problem area for us. I think KVY has been really, I think he was over trying the other day um, against Wimbledon. Um, his distribution was really, really poor. He, he was the one thing, thing that I saw that just didn't, it didn't happen. The work rate was good and everything, but he kept giving the ball away. It was constant. He was putting people in trouble. He was, he looked like he was over trying. And then the, to get two bookings in the space of 10 minutes, he didn't need, there was 45 seconds left in the game. So, and, you know, I'm disappointed, really gutted because we know what a great player he is. So hopefully he can get back into that form, but we need someone in there quickly and, and hopefully that'll really help us. And he's coming into a team in great confidence, which will help any new signing. He's not coming into a team that's struggling. He's coming into a team that's playing well, which will really help him. Yeah, I do agree with you in that uh, I think fullbacks or, or the wide areas in general have been a bit uh, a bit of a testing area at the moment. So not going forward, yeah. but uh, what, cause I didn't go to the Bolton game and I, I watched it on <clears> on, uh, on the TV and I thought Penny had a really poor game. Well, I've seen Penny. I've seen Penny, Penny have a few difficult games. So, so I've seen Penny struggle a little. Yeah. If this is if this is a sign in to sort of just bolster those ranks or give give others a kick out the backside or if he comes straight in like you know Backinson we haven't mentioned him yet obviously he's come straight in now and made his first start on Tuesday and so he didn't look out of place which is easy yeah. enough to do when you win two 0 I appreciate but yeah like we'll see how it goes um, I might as well quickly get in my my thoughts on the last few games and then we can pass it over to Alex um, if it yeah like the, the win on Tuesday night was was comfortable enough that in the end like. It certainly didn't look comfortable uh, towards the start of the second half. I mean, the first half was was entirely forgettable. In fact, the ref forgot about it so much that he blew up 30 seconds before 45 minutes had gone, um, which was strange. It was alluding, maybe alluding to his refereeing hero in the African Cup of Nations who did something similar a few weeks ago. Yes, Ross? You're taking over hosts at the moment. But um, what actually happened, I found out after the game, is basically they didn't reset the clock from the previous game. So they sort of so that's, they did, he actually didn't blow up actually you know too early. He, he wasn't wrong, was he? Like the time no. was correct. It's just the scoreboard yeah. was incorrect. Yeah, yeah. But um, carry on, Bluness. I just thought I'd just yeah. bring you in there. No, that's 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 good knowledge to have. It's not what not, that wasn't made clear in the stands <laughs> on Tuesday. There was a lot of weird, uh, confused faces. I think some of the players got confused as well. Um, but yeah, like it, it, a good performance in the end. It's funny that. In the start of the season, the XG numbers were saying that a lot of our opponents were taking chances more regularly than they should have been and that we were conceding more goals than than what the chances would say in terms of the strength of those chances. And yet, with three of these wins that we've had now um, under McKenna, the, the Wickham game, glaring chance that Wickham missed. In this Wimbledon game, one-on-one -on -one that was missed and then, you know, shanked, on, shanked onto... Christian Walton's hand somehow by Wolfenden. And yeah, like those things were going against us uh, at start season. And maybe Paul Cook will feel aggrieved if he's watching this in his bunker somewhere that this rubber the green that didn't necessarily happen for him. But look, you're right, you're right, you luck, and you also make your own luck slightly. And the level of performances have been so far uh, better, in my opinion. I know that we haven't played any of the big guns yet, but if we're going to make up this gap, you need, to, you need to get nine points out of 12 or 12 out of 15. Like, it's it's what you're going to have to carry on for for the rest of the season to have any chance. So, I'm really happy. And what I'm really happy with is that there does seem to be such a an idea of how we want to play now. Like, that seems to be really set in stone. The um, Being comfortable on the ball, building out from the back, but then also utilising the width of the pitch and our wide players to cut in. Burns' two goals were very, very similar on Tuesday night, and he's been a revelation under McKenna so far because he also did the same thing in the Gillingham game for his goal uh, at Priestfield, cutting in from that side and, and getting a shot away to keep it on target. And these goalkeepers in League One obviously aren't world class, and and you never know what can happen. I think I said that on Tuesday night on the on the post match video. So that's what I'm really excited about, and and yeah, like if this new guy comes in and hits ground running, it can only be beneficial. So. Real good positives from me, and that's not something I've said quite often on this podcast <clears throat> in the course of the start of the season. So I'm, I'm happy to say that. Do not adjust your sets. <laughs> do not, do not, indeed. Um, Alex, um, unfortunately, you weren't at the game, but luckily, I follow is still providing content for people to see. Um, you're able to watch it. Um, that's maybe the only good thing about I follow still being a thing. People could actually watch it at home if they can't get to the game. But um, what did you like from Tuesday night and from the two wins? 
Well, it's like Bloomers is saying, you, you do make your own luck. Um, winning is a habit, definitely is. I, I, I loved it. I, there's patience about this team. There was a real feeling of patience from the start of the Cook era or the brief era and game changer and everything arriving. It was chaos, wasn't it? It was carnage. Do you remember Cookie coming off the pitch after we'd won a game and going, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Right? He came off the pitch and he was going off his nuts. We'd beaten someone 1 0 or 4 0, 3 0. It didn't matter. You know, triumph and adversity, you know, treat them both as the imposters that they are. I think Kieran McKenna will be going mad if we get promoted. I, I think his demeanour is something that's come in and has made a big difference to this team. I think there's a calmness about him that after all the chaos, this club really needs. Like Bloomers was saying, everyone, they seem to know what they're doing. But the one thing that really comes out is the work rate. I think it's outstanding. Sonny Aluko was running his, his knackers off in the first half, especially. Nord was doing the same. Burns was belting back whenever they did have possession. The work rate, it's all part, it's all organic. It all comes from winning, simple instructions to the players. And then it all just starts to grow and then you get a little bit of luck. We can talk all night about things, but I would, Christian Walton for me has been absolutely crucial to this. That thing that hit, he spread himself, it hit his foot and, and cannoned away, didn't it? The one-on-one -on -one save was absolutely crucial. In these tight games, those moments are absolutely massive. If you've got a great goalkeeper making those great saves and becoming impenetrable, that will give you wins. That turns the draws into wins or the defeats into draws. And he is absolutely fantastic. What a great signing. Um, played really well. Jackson was poor. He's still poor for me. He worked hard, though, and that's great. The way that he can change the front three and we can still go and get a result and make four changes, that was amazing in itself as well. You know what? At the start of the season, you had Macaulay Bond as player of the year. I'm loving Wolfie. I think Wolfie's a potential. We talked about the Renaissance, the player of the year. Walton could be a player of the year. All of these players are emerging and playing really, really well. We were a little bit lucky against Wimbledon, but patience was the key. And I think we are performing in the imitation of our manager. It was very calm. Keep your head down. Just don't celebrate the huge wins too much and don't get too down with the defeats. And it will come, it will come, it will come. And uh, long may it continue. And what is the game of the season on Saturday against Sheffield Wednesday it is now taking on massive, massive importance. And that of that is down to what Kieran McKenna has brought to the team. I mean, we say the opposition hasn't been great. I tell you what, we've been struggling against that opposition for the last two years. We haven't been able to put those teams away in the last two years. We've best post-war record of any manager in Ipswich Town's history for the first five games. So, yeah, Wimbledon was great. It wasn't a great performance, but we still came away and could have won three or four nil at the end. So, apart from KVY, everything was amazing. So, uh, well done, Kieran. I'm, I'm right behind him. It's been brilliant so far. And, um, well, Ben, let's um, sort of segue now into McKenna. I know you hadn't really had the opportunity to really talk about the win against Wimbledon. I'm sure you can use that as part of the McKenna chat. Um, five games in, four wins. Not too bad for McKenna. What have you loved? What have you liked? What have you, what other words can I use? Just, yeah, what have you liked of his... Um, what, have his liked? what have I liked? Yeah. Um, just his, like Alex said there, just his demeanour. He's very calm. He's like a teacher. I sort of think he's as much as he's young, you know, he's not sort of an old owl sort of teacher um, that people look up to in that respect. He just seems very calm. He probably sort of explains things in the right way. You know, he is a teacher of football, so he will probably explain something to the players about a press or the way we switch play or the way we keep the ball or we get rid of it. In these moments, we play a five, 10 yard pass. Yeah, I think he's so meticulous. We'll play a five, 10 yard pass in these areas. We'll play a 40, 50 yard pass in these areas. Like I really feel that him and his coaching staff just go into the minute details. I mean, he's talked about um, those marginal gains, you know, the, the change he's made to pre-match now, meeting at Playford Road, and they all come on a coach together. Some of it he's used at Manchester United to, to use at our level. Very tiny things can make a big difference. So I'm a huge believer in that. I know um, Mr. Brailsford, um, British Cycling, was a hugely controversial figure in the end um, when he quit. But those marginal gains used to go on about one of how many gold medals, you know, Tour de France with, with, with Froome and Wiggins. So 
that way of thinking has, has been proven. If he's <clears throat> bringing that on board to our club, um, it's a way of management that we haven't had before. And at the moment, it's paying dividends. Obviously, a, a very small sample size, only five <laughs> games. But I really enjoy watching us. Um, I think I spoke, spoke to people after the game at Crington and didn't really feel like we were going to lose when we went 2-1 up just because we have the ball all the time. I can't remember seeing a side keep the ball this well, an Ipswich side. Again, only five games. But if you have the ball, the opposition can't score. So, you know, against Wimbledon, Alex said we were patient. Again, it's quite relaxed. I felt like we would score, even though we didn't threaten. I just felt like we've got too many good players. I just thought we were going to win 1 0. The fact we got the second was a bonus. Yes, we rode our lucky there. But how many games in 90 minutes of football do you not give away one chance or two? And that's why you have a bloody good goalkeeper. We're lucky enough to make that fantastic signing, Walton. So the club are backing him. I love everything I hear from him from his interviews, pre-match, post-match. Obviously, it's all rosy at the minute. So the real test will come when we lose, if, if, if not when, if we lose a couple on the bounce. Um, a huge game at the weekend, which will test his metal. Not having Morse is, you know, a big, a big, a big problem, I think. But he'll, I think he'll solve it. I, I'm still going into the game positive. I know we'll talk about the Wednesday game in a bit, so I won't blabber on. Um, but I, I think there are any issues there. I think he's just got that mind where he will be able to pick something and, and he'll be able to solve that issue, whether it's with personnel or a tactical tweak. Um, yeah, incredibly impressed. Um, I know when he signed, people didn't know what to expect. Why, why should they? Lots of Manchester United fans thinking he was behind their, their sort of fall, fall of grace over the last couple of years. But um, no, I think every town fan right now is absolutely delighted with, with him, the team, the confidence they're showing. You're really, really, really excited for the rest of the season at this moment in time. Yeah, it was, um, of course, on Tuesday night. It was the first time where there was a, a massive song going, McKenna's at the wheel, at the wheel, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And Bloomers, um, are you going to echo that? What's your, your thoughts on McKenna so far? And um, I remember recording a video of all the, on the betting of all the you know managers that were linked and Ken of course was not on any of those lists but uh yeah it was a risk but so far he's he's doing okay he's still in honeymoon period but all good signs so far uh, I mean I was very annoyed when uh the news broke that he was set to become our manager because in my opinion if we want to go with someone completely un well, not completely untested but someone that was in their rookie phase of being a manager at least go for someone who had experience of dealing with something similar to what we were going or we are going through um, because it was such a or is such a big job and it's such an important part of our history this, this, probably, this is probably the biggest part of our history because of where we are and where we aspire to be in terms of getting the ship turned around but you can only be impressed so far with a how he's conducted himself um, b the results that, that have happened on the pitch c the style of play that's coming through and D, getting the best out of individual players. It is, it is a big tick in the box for all four of those. And it's something that's surprised me, um, but in a good way. And yes, we haven't played a top hitter yet, but it's a win and win and win and win. And the Bolton game, sort of the first half, we were never really blown away. We deserve to lose, but, you know, those, those games can happen. And the odds are that over five games, you'll get one of those performances and, and the other games we've won. So you can only be happy. And it's still a massive, I, I don't care. I, I know who are getting excited. And if I still say the season's over, then it makes me feel better because I, I don't get excited then. But, you know, you do keep going and you do get these results and, and each game goes, goes by, you can get closer and closer. The trouble is like games like Saturday, we pretty much have to win. We have we, we put ourselves in that position now. We have to win because these are teams that are going to be there or thereabouts, and they're teams we're looking to leapfrog. If, if they beat us on Saturday, Sheffield Wednesday, then all of a sudden the gap that was, well, actually, I think we're a point above them having played a game more or something like that. But all of a sudden that gets completely decimated, and and you're playing catch up to them, and, and games will run out, and time will run out. But look, you can only be happy so far. I can't imagine anyone's not, and that's that's all you can say really and yeah long long live this this level of performance and and this togetherness from the fans and the players long live it for the rest of the season because we're gonna bloody need it if we've got any you know chance of getting in fifth or sixth place which looks like that's gonna be it it looks like the the top four are kind of 
the top three are certainly pulling away. Fourth place looks like it could be shored up as well. So only half the playoff spots to aim for. So let's kick on. Definitely. And um, Alex, same question to you. What what have you liked so far under McKenna and the you know four wins? I think it's once again bringing the post-war um, stat out. Um, one of the best managers since the post-war who um, has seen four wins out of his first five games. It's uh, two back-to-back -back wins. Paul Cook did that once, back-to-back -back wins. Um, McKenna's already topped that. Yeah, it is early days, so we, we can't get too excited. Obviously, it'd be silly to get carried away. I, I just think the team plays a bit more like the manager. When Cook was in charge, it was very harem scarum. It was it was a lot of people kind of running around, not really knowing what they were doing. That doesn't say that Cook isn't a, is a bad manager. I still believe the Richardson factor was huge, him not having a number two there. I wonder what Martin Pert is doing on the training ground with 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 McKenna. It's obviously it's obviously working. Um, but there's a flexibility in formation as well. He, he changed the way that we were playing. And, and you just get the feeling that he picked a team specifically for Wimbledon. Um, he changed things. He wanted to rest players or who knows the, why he made those decisions. We don't know. We're not on the training ground. But he suddenly changed the front three. And he saw two up top as being the best way, putting in the win. Compact, etc. You just get the feeling that he's, he's technically astute and that he's play specific players for specific opponents. That doesn't mean we're obsessed with what everything that they're going to do. That's not the same thing. What it means is that there's a plan so that he's telling players to do certain things in certain games. And I think like um, Ben was talking about, that level of detail comes from having coached at the very best, at the very top end of the tree and, and having worked alongside the real great, great uh, managers um, that he has already experienced. Um, I'm really excited about it. I think if we don't make it, I'm, I'm with Bloomers. I still think there's, I don't think we're going to do it, I, but I really want us to, and I'm there with us all the way. I just think it's it's just too late for me, even though the fixtures look great as well. I just think we will slip and three or four defeats, we're not going to do it. So we don't, we don't have any leeway anymore. We have no leeway. We can't lose a couple of games. If we do, it's it's done. We're, we're not going to make it. Um, but if we don't get there, I'm really hopeful for next season. Really, really hopeful I really liked the guy, um, didn't know who he was. None of us did. And you know what? The amount of stick that McKenna was getting from United fans on social. Um, I'm, I'm really ignorant of that completely. I don't care about what they think, about what they're saying about him, because he has come over so well. The respect that he's showing, the way he shook hands with the Accrington Stanley player last week, who he knew after the press conference. Good luck to your family. Good luck. Take care. Good to see you, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Cook wasn't like that. Cook was going into the post with media. Going, what you like that for? What you like that for? We'll just keep the mouth shut. And you're like, calm it down. And we've got this new influence that's come in. I think he's, I th I'm really excited about him. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. But tougher tests to come. If we lose 4-0 against Wednesday, I'm not going to suddenly go, oh no, this is a nightmare. He's the wrong man. Um, the fans have been brilliant at our club. He's got a bit more flexibility, a bit more technical now. And he's getting a tune at the exact same players that Cook had. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. Long, long may it continue. Upper Town. OK, so I've had Kieran McKenna and Paul Cook on the show this week. Yeah, um, hopefully good. you've enjoyed that. Um, well, I think we should just go straight into Sheffield Wednesday. It's been mentioned enough now. I don't think there's any other notes from the McKenna thing and the women in game. Anything else you want to add before we get to Sheffield Wednesday, Ben? Shall we just get right into it? Well, can I say, can I just say, sorry, um, the team spirit looks great. But yeah. They seem more natural. They seem really happy with each other. They're jumping up and down after the celebrations. I know winning it makes it easier. But that team spirit, I think that comes from having someone with a good organisation on us, knowing what you're doing, feeling comfortable and just getting that spirit going. And you guys, the fans, us, we're all a huge part of that as well. They, they're all talking about how great the support is. And we are making a massive difference to this. If we do get over the line, because if we get to the playoffs, we will win it. If we do get over the line, we'll be part of that. Absolutely. Because the effing support has been absolutely brilliant. Really proud of everyone. Anyway, I'm rambling. On you go. No, no, not at all, my friend. Um, yeah, the support has been fantastic. Definitely away games. Of course, for Portland Road, you know, getting 20,000 pretty much nearly every week. I know we had the pack out PR campaign, but, um, you know, London away. Day, that was the golden ticket getting that ticket at Wimbledon. Um, ben Bloomers, you're the lucky lucky few who got that. Um, Chef Wednesday, once again, it's going to be another big away crowd, away following. Uh, Hillsborough, of course, is a, a same. I think a lot of fans just like going to because of the, you know, the history and all that and just it's a big stadium. Um, 
so let's get right into it then, Ben. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, one of the big dogs of League One. Uh, when I was looking back and looking at some info for my Meet the Oppo video I was doing, they've only lost one league game at home all season long. But they've had a, a few little blips recently in, in terms of performances. How are you feeling going into this one? And um, team-wise, could we see Dominic Thompson? Is his name? Is that a new signing? Yeah, Dominic yeah. Thompson. <laughs> it's not too, not too tricky to say. Um, yeah, maybe he could start, possibly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we don't know the fitness of Penny. Coulson apparently is just back in training. So if, if he's fit and raring to go, I saw just on the quick, um, quickly on the Twitter feed that he got... Paired against us last season for Swindon to set up all three goals. So some pedigree there in League One. Um, and um, it was also mentioned that he played against Man City earlier this season and got man of the match for Brentford. So automatically thinking, how on earth have we signed him with, 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 with someone who's played twice in the Premier League this season? But it, so that makes me think he will start. You know, if he's doing that sort of thing in, in the Premier League for Brentford and, and um, ready to go, I'm sure he's, a, he's, he's fit enough. He will be if he's playing in the Premier League. So... I'd have thought he'll come straight back in. I cannot see us changing any of the centre halves. Um, Burns will be right wing back. I, I imagine we'll keep with three centre halves, un unless <laughs> McKenna sees something in Sheffield Wednesday where he thinks there's a weakness. Um, centre midfield is going to be the real main one. I'm, I don't. I'm not actually too bothered whether Norwood or Bond starts up front. I think at the moment they're both playing quite well. When I say much of a muchness, I mean that in between them, they're, they're, they're similar players. They give us an option in the air. They'll work hard. One plays 75, the, the next one, you know, the one on the bench comes on for 15. So, yeah, midfield's the decision-making. And, we, you know, we can't really have too much of an opinion on that because we don't know who's going to be fit. Um, if Evans is fit, I would think he will come in for Carroll or Bakinson and the other one will, the other one will, will play. Um, I enjoyed um, Bakinson or Bakinson. It'd be great to get confirmation from your colleagues, Ross. Maybe someone can ask him how we pronounce his surname. Bakinson. Do you know you're not going to ask me. I can't no, 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 no. Just, just in case it's got to be, it's got to be Backinson. There's no E in there. Yeah. So we'll go Backinson. Um, he jumped. Yeah. Burns is celebrating on Tuesday night, and he ran all the way along past the goal to all the way along the fans. Backinson was very close to where I was. I just came and all the fans were hugging him. He thought all the other players were going to come and join him, but so he yeah. very much enjoyed his time. I think with town. I don't like a centre midfielder wearing gloves. That's one very small thing. Actually, <laughs> a hard man in centre mid and he's wearing gloves. Don't like that. But um, yeah, he, he played okay. So him, him or Carroll with Evans, or maybe we'll just go with those two again. It depends on the fitness. Um, it will just be a really tight game. I don't think, um, I, do you know what, I really gonna, it's going to be the sort of game where I'm going to be really thankful for a couple of pints before the game because I was just <laughs> too nervous. Um, we're going to need to settle my nerves. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a good, I'm a good watcher in terms of enjoy watching it. Um, I love watching football, but I'm not great if the game is tight and, you know, we're getting to a point in the season where we're desperate not to lose. I think all your colleagues, Ross, predicted a 1-1 draw. I, I think that is the easy game, you know, the easy score prediction to go for. But we are in very, very good form. I know Wednesday have only lost once at home all season. They have been a bit patchy as much as the pressure's on us. You know, we're the away team. You know, they're, they're going to have 25, 30... 30,000 there with, with our 2,700 or 2,800, what we're going to have at the top of that stand. So it's going to be a great atmosphere. Um, and if it doesn't start well for them and the pressure grows, you know, nil-nil at half time, or we get an early goal, then it changes the whole game. I, I think if we, can, if we can get that first goal, it's going to be absolutely crucial for us because I think then we'll be able to hold on to it um, and maybe, maybe sneak a 1-0 or a 2-1 win. So um, that's me being ultra positive. Um, but with the form Burns is in, it just gives you a chance, doesn't it? It gives you always, he's got that out, output ball on the, on the right-hand side. So if the game gets really tight, he always stays as far right as possible. And you've got Luco or Chaplin playing number 10. They get the ball down so well. They win it back so well. A few intricate passes, Burns on the right, and then Norwood or Bond in the middle. I can see another goal coming from that side. And as I said, I don't, I don't think we, I, I back us to score. So if we can score first, hold on to the lead. And we can have a bloody good weekend at Sheffield. Yes, mate. I'll, I'll, as I've got you, what's your prediction? I've just deleted all the predictions from the Wimbledon game so I can have a fresh, clean slate. So um, I've got your name down. What is your prediction? <laughs> I've just been so positive then. And I was thinking to myself, oh, I don't know, but yeah, 1-1 one, one is the safe thing to say. Um, and I'm getting quite competitive in this prediction league because I think I'm fourth. I'm just going to say 1-1, one, one, Ross. <laughs> but we could, <laughs> could be 1-0. <laughs> But 
What's what's the uh, definite answer here? What's what's um? You, you, oh, sorry. It. Two two one Ipswich. I'm going no. I'm forgetting everything I said. Two one Ipswich. Why not? Two one Ipswich. Okay then. Uh, Bloomers, over to you. Um, how are you feeling going into this game? And um, once again, I think you're well. You're you're going in and up and down in the prediction league. Um, because you keep drawing and then we win. Or you well. You keep no, you've got it. You've got it spot on. Every, I, I think I predict every game to be a one-one, and four times out of the last five, we've gone and won. So I feel like for the predictions league sake, I'm going to have to continue to do one-one because yeah. Ipswich are winning, and I'd rather us win uh, in real life than uh, yeah, on the real league. Um, I think the importance of the game on Saturday has been quite well documented. Now I don't think we need to say more about that. Um, just looking at Chef Wednesday themselves. Um, they have well, their games have involved a lot of goals recently. Like their last four games has been a five nil, a four two, and a three two. So it, it kind of goes against the fact that actually um, every team above them, so they're ninth in the table right now. Every team above them has scored more goals at a canter as well. Like the, the, the nearest to them, so they scored thirty six goals on Wednesday. The team above them that scored the next least amount is Oxford and Sick with forty three. So. It's clear to see where, where Wednesday's problems were lying, and yet all of a sudden they seem to be rattling in goals left, right and centre, although not always uh, coming on the, the right end of those results. I think there's going to be goals in this one then, just looking at that current form. We know how uh, potent we've suddenly been now with, with finding a success with players out wide and also actually the, the two front men on Tuesday working really well to... Um, get the wide players involved. The first goal was evidence of that. That turn from from Norwood to release uh, Burns was fantastic. And then the ball from Bon to the second goal, I don't know he was right out the other wing, but getting Burns involved again and a very similar run and finish was 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 fantastic. And it's what Burns can do. And, and it's a clear path of success for us. Now, I can't profess to know exactly how good or not good Wednesday's fullbacks are, but I'm sure Mr McKenna will because that's what he's paid to do. And, and if you can think that we match up well there, then I would expect to see a lot more from our wide players again. Now, they've kind of been hot and cold, as I've said, and I've been quite vocal on Twitter, actually, especially at the start of the season, saying that we'll finish above Sheffield Wednesday this season. Uh, I, I did think that was going to be a title race at the start of the season. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to be the case now. It's like a battle for battle for ninth or, or if we're all really happy, it's a battle for sixth. But yeah, I, I do. I do see goals in this one. I think it'll be two one either way, or maybe even a Desmond. Oh, Ben's uh, method of working out a result was all over the place, but actually managed to find the same way that I can. I I'm going to say two one Ipswich, but for the prediction league, Ross, I'll say one one just to keep uh, to keep the run going. But yeah, I I, I do think there's going to be goals in this one, and, and look, signing Christian Walton might again prove to be a masterstroke for this game because he might be called upon five or six times and and hit, the recent history has shown that he's been putting off some world he says it might not continue but it gives you great confidence now and you've got someone in nets who is capable of doing that kind of world he save that that would make all the difference he did it against Atkinson, he did it against wimbledon um so yeah let's let's hope that he's got another couple in him because he might be tested at, at hillsborough but yeah with the three thousand i can't believe three thousand people are going from Suffolk and and wherever else in the country, that's I, I doff my cap to all of you. I won't I won't be there unfortunately, but have a great time because Sheffield's a, a fantastic city and definitely one to stick around for in the night time if if any of you are, and then come see me afterwards in my DMs for some recommendations. There we go, uh, Alex. Over to you then to wrap up the Sheffield Wednesday chat. How are you feeling going into this one? As I said, the battle of the big dogs in League One because um, both got big history. A big supporter base um and yeah it's going to be one of those games where i think a lot of eyes will be on the game because it may maybe settle whoever's going to be in that playoff race yeah it's a big pitch isn't it it's, it's a big ground it's a big pitch it's not it's not tight in it's so yeah this is that's you know as we've said this is absolutely massive it's interesting what bloomers was saying about the goals i i think there's going to be goals in this i really do i think I think this is going to be a game that McKenna is not going to want it to be like. I think it's going to be a bit back and forth, a bit end to end. They both have got so much. This is such an important game for them as well. They're just behind us. They need to. They need. They're desperate to get in the playoffs, just like we are. 
So when you've got two teams that are absolutely desperate when they're looking up, you're going to get something special. I, my predictions have been absolutely dreadful. I am moving into the relegation zone. So um, unfortunately, I am going to predict a win. I predict a riot. Uh, I would say 3-2 Ipswich. That's what we're going to go with. Um, Bannon is the key for Sheffield Wednesday. He's the one that makes him tick. And it's a shame, shame Morsey's not playing because he could have dealt with Bannon in a big way. Um because he's an older, he's an older player now, Bannon, more mature. He's the one that makes them tick. <sighs> They're a good side. They're really strong at home. I don't really worry about the fact that they've only lost once at home. That doesn't really bother me. That doesn't mean we can't go there and, and get a good result. I, th I think we'll win. Um, don't know why. Um, but it's massive. And I just think it's going to be a hell of a game. I think it's going to be a, the game of the day. And, um, oh, my goodness. If we could get a win there. We've got 17 games left. Nine of them are at home. You look at the home games. Gillingham, Burton, Cheltenham, Lincoln, Pompey, Plymouth, Cambridge, Wigan and Charlton. You could get eight wins there. That's 24 points. And then you kind of need three wins from those away games. This is where it starts. This is this is the one. This is where you go. And if we get a win, this is where the players and Kieran McKenna go, right, OK, we are in this now. It's time to say that the season is back on. And I will say that, definitely. Such a massive game. So excited. I'll be on the iFollow again. Wish I was there, but can't bloody afford it. But yeah, um, massive goals galore. We're going to come out on top. You talk about that Bond pass, Bloomers, against AFC Wimbledon. That was a gorgeous ball. The one that Jackson played to Norwood before, leading up to the first Burns goal was behind Norwood. And Nor the, the centre-back didn't intercept it. And, then, and Norwood made it into a good pass. And that was the difference. Bond got it and he spanked it wide with a beautiful crossfield ball. I love the look of Bond. He's he's a he's a diamond. Just wish he could score some more goals and get back on that run again. I think Bond will play against Wednesday. I think Bond's the man for me. Bond's going to score. Bond with two. Bond and Burns three two Ipswich. I'm getting I'm getting. I feel sick just talking about it. Move on. Honestly, Alex, I feel I feel so nervous now. You pick it up. I, I feel I feel a bit sick. I'm sat in my dining room. I'm feeling sick. I don't even want to Thank go you. up there now. I'm going for a weekend away. And my wife, I might just stick that's such a such her. a such a sweet thing to say, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> um, on that note, really, it's um, it's the standard. Any other business? Uh, is there any other things we want to cover before we wrap up? I think it's been a nice tight show, uh, but a lot has been said. We have breaking news. Happy days. Um, a new man in the box. Do we know his squad number yet, or is that announced yet? Ooh, let me let me see if I can quickly dig that out. Someone else goes there in on business. He's a he's a fullback. So uh, yeah, I don't know what numbers are actually available. Um, but Ben, any other business, my friend? Yeah, I'll just say, just touching on what Alex and Bloomer said earlier, the the just on the support, just to round up, is probably the best thing. Um, go out with a bang. They everybody deserves huge credit. We're all in this together, kind of attitude. You know, we've got Alex there who's desperate to go to a game, can't quite do it at the minute. And you can, you know, it sort of pains him that he can't go. Um, I'm looking at things like Doncaster away on Tuesday night now. Like, what, you know, what are you doing? You know, it's League One football, Doncaster on Tuesday night. But I'm generally still considering it. Um, went to Wimbledon on my own on Tuesday. Just, it's, it's silly, but we, we all just love it at the minute. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good community of fans. I'm not just saying that. In terms of just the Kings of Anglia podcast, of course, we're all fantastic chaps and it's, it's great meeting up and stuff. But that everybody is, is really excited about this side, about McKenna. There is a really good atmosphere at these games. Um, and again, like the MK Don sing, it's nuts. Another thousand tickets go on sale tomorrow for the, for the top tier after 4,000 sold. Probably sell them. So we'll have more fans at MK Dons than MK Dons will have, I'd have thought. They're not going to they're not going to bring 5,000 home. Well, then maybe. But anyway, I just want to say the fans are fantastic. Really looking forward to catching up with a few more people on Saturday. Again, I, I, I sort of did um, trick my wife um, to meet some friends in Sheffield for the weekend and it just happened to be Sheffield Wednesday away. But um, yeah, nice really sleep. looking forward to the game. And um, yeah, if Alex said, if we can get the win, it will be phenomenal. So just want to say shout out to the fans. Brilliant, all of you. Blue I just like to get... Um, get a question about who, who the um, the player of the year is. Um, at the moment, people would say Burns, but there are five players in, in the running for it. They're Fridge, um, obviously, um, I think Danassian. 
Um, I think Walton, if he kept his form going, I think it's brilliant. I think Burns is favourite for player of the year, probably. But I think that's so fantastic. When you look at last year, we didn't even have anyone. Toto got it and we didn't even want to have the competition. But finally, my big thing about McKenna, and this is the thing that's made me most excited. God, I sounded Norfolk there, didn't I? Just bloody excited. Right, is Luke Wolfenden. Because two seasons ago, I saw Luke Wolfenden in one of the early games against Sunderland. Three seasons ago, I can't remember. He was a Rolls-Royce. And I thought, there's a, there's a 10 million defender. There's a Webster there. There's a hell of a player. He's back in the side now because he was in and out, wasn't he? He's played the last seven games. It's just great to see Wolfie. I love that man. He's my favourite player. And he's just a diamond. He's a great, great defender. So much about him. He's class. And now he's getting into his rhythm. If he plays the next 17 games, nine, nine at home, eight away, um, it will be absolutely brilliant. He's my vote for the player of the year, hopefully, to take us back in the championship. Passionate. Yeah. Passionate. Fantastic. I think... Uh... I think that we will know who the player of the year is quite easily if this form continues. I'll, I'll leave mm -hmm. it at that. I think the person, I think the person that will step out on the come player of the year will be quite obvious. Should we continue on the way that we are? Uh, I know that's cryptic, but I'll, I'll let you Where's know who burnt? that person is. I'll let you know who I'm thinking of, and I won't change my mind. You can, you've got my word. But if, if it carries on the way that it is, then yeah, I'll let you know. I think he'll. I think by the way, uh, I would put money on um, Thompson wearing number two, just because I've got the mm. squad list in front of me here. Unless he unless he goes like ball to the wall and goes like thirty eight or something. Uh, if he's, if he's yeah, left back with number two, Andy if Warren. Got favorite, like that. If, he, if he's a got a favourite number in the if he's got a favourite number in like the thirties or whatever, then like by all means go for it. But but yeah, two is available. He's not getting four. Uh, there is four available, but you should get four. Oh, no, sorry. No, it's not. Raheem Mark has got four. Um, but yeah, two two is Who? available. So Yeah, well, quite. Maybe maybe number four will be available soon. Um, what happened to him? But but yeah, I just, this is another thing I was just going to say. like Because I know that there's some such strong squads in this division. That when you like, look at the likes of Wigan and Wigan and Wigan. Wigan have the strongest squad in the division. But when you look down like name by name and try and break it down, because I've got the entire squad. Uh, squad list in front of me here, Sands uh, Thompson, and you just think, how the hell are we in this position in the first place? Like, like yeah. I know McKenna's trying to implement a very un unique, but a very specific style of football he wants us to play, I and I know that ultimately his end goal won't happen in these five or ten games. It will be 30, 40 games down the line, ideally. You know, these things, these things always take time, but like. Even with these little tweaks that he's done, we've won four games out of five and looks good doing it. Like, how? Where did this disconnect come from at the start of the season? I, I know there was some bad luck that you could say and and whatnot, but also we had good luck because we were scoring way more goals than we had any right to when you broke down the XG numbers. So it baffles me how we've waited. It's wait, and I know David has banged on about this since the start of the season. He's completely right. How we've just wasted the first three, four months of the season and got us in this position where we need to go on this stupid streak to. To get back in the top six it's so frustrating and hopefully come the summer we don't see like this squad gutted because if it doesn't happen and you know most of us think it won't including me like no not many tweaks this squad and and, and the same manager and the, like we should be right up there again to really make a challenge you know it's taken four seasons for some of them to start trying to be like right up at the top <laughs> two so maybe that's what's going to happen to us but yeah, I know we should always look forward to the future, but my final thought was just looking back at the start of the, uh, the past and the start of the season and make me want to tear what little hair out I've got left. <laughs> I mean, I'm the only one on this pod who's yeah, yeah, still your hair, ben, if you're right. do it, aren't I? I'm the only one. Ross, you've ruled out the season. I know Alex and Bloomers have. So I hope, hope, hopefully off Sasso we might get, I think, a shift. Hope so. Or, we'll see. We shall see. We we'll shall see. see. That's to be continued. To P continues. Um, we've got to think of a title for this podcast. It's probably just Dominic and Thompson signs and to be continued and all that. We'll, that, we'll figure out. That SEO, get that SEO traffic, mate. Yeah, can, that's, we that's can, we not do something, can we not do something about Alex's snood? I just think it's just it really <laughs> needs. Yeah. People listen on audio, you'll probably see this on video, see it on the screenshot that I put out for the podcast. Yeah. 
for those who will not watch the video it's absolutely magnificently warm looks like something that if you had a granny who would stitch all day could do sort of in a few hours but it's i mean it's absolutely massive yeah it covers all his face there we go i need one of those to be fair these cold tuesday nights i need i need more i need more warming up i think but there we go. Um, we shall end it there, I shall say. Uh, ben, Bloomers, Alex, thank you very much for joining me as ever. Hopefully has enjoyed listening. Um, if you're on your way to Sheffield Wednesday while listening to this, safe travels. Um, as always, support our sponsors at manscaped.com. Use the code KOA um, at manscaped.com. And get 20% off and free delivery. We will be back next week for the main pod. Fan social, Track the Girls Talk podcast as well, and all the other bits and bobs. And hopefully town... We'll make it five wins out of six under McKenna. And the momentum will keep building. And as Ben said, this will continue to be continued pretty much. Um, anyway, I am rambling. Let's end this podcast. Goodbye from me. Enjoy Sheffield.